The UK's Committee on Climate Change produced its report last week, showing how the country could aim for net zero climate change emissions by 2050. I thought it would be useful to dive in and take a look at some of the detail of this. So in this video, we take one major part of the mix, electricity generation, and we answer the question, what actually would be involved in getting to zero? My name is Malin Baker. This is the Malin Baker Show for Changemakers. The Climate Change Committee report is an impressive and useful document. It's been put together by a significant group of experts from all areas, and it's looked at what could be achieved to push our ambition in meeting climate change as far as it can go. We know, of course, that some campaigners say it should all be done a lot quicker. But let's look at the detail of what needs to happen and why the timescale looks like it does. After all, even if you aim to disagree with something, you should probably understand it first. And that goes for me too, of course. I am not and would never aspire to be an energy expert or a climate scientist for that matter. What I can do is look at what those experts say and where required, check any sources that they quote. And yes, this is about the UK. If you're not UK based, your status quo will look different. But there will be other variables such as the options for renewables development. But this exercise will nevertheless inform your thinking on the topic, so I recommend you stick with it. For this video, I'm looking at a significant piece in the puzzle, the power sector. I may do subsequent videos on other aspects such as transport, buildings and so on, if there's interest. Where are we today? The UK power sector made up 15% of UK greenhouse gas emissions in 2017, which is 64% below 1990 levels. That reduction came mainly through the country moving away from coal-fired power stations, mostly moving to gas. Low carbon energy, meaning nuclear power and renewables, currently makes up over half of UK electricity generation. And with a massive drop in prices for renewable energy production, a simplistic worldview would say, well, that's great. All you need to do now is build a whole bunch more renewable generation capacity, retire the other 50% of carbon producing sources and bingo, no problem. And because we can deploy that technology fast, we could do this all a lot quicker, say by 2025. Well, not so fast. First, you need to understand the principle of how the energy system works. This is literally GCSE physics. It shows the level of electricity demand through the course of a day. The dotted line represents the energy base load, the amount of electricity being generated as standard. You can see that in the evening, demand peaks because everyone's at home doing whatever they do, and that pushes demand above base load. So at that moment of peak demand, you need to be able to bring online additional capacity to meet the demand. That means forms of energy generation that can be brought online at short notice. Typically, this has meant gas-fired power stations that can be fired up in about an hour. Now, what currently creates the demand? 36% of the electricity is used by households, 34% by business, and 31% by industry. Within households, that breaks down to 71% used by appliances, 16% by lighting, 7% cooking, 6% heating. In recent times, that demand has been falling due to appliances and lighting becoming more energy efficient. However, moving the UK to zero emissions will necessarily involve significant increases in generation. And that's mostly because of a move to electricity for vehicle power and building heating. The report estimates an uptake of 12.5 million electric vehicles, 2 million heat pumps. So the solutions have to build in that major increase in capacity. Add to this the other factor in the mix, renewables, wind or solar power particularly, are dependent on the weather. The sun doesn't shine at night, the wind may not blow on any particular day, it may blow up a gale the following day. These sources of energy are variable and unpredictable, so that variation needs to be able to be accommodated within the system. How do you accommodate something like that in the system? You need capacity to store energy for later use. So when it's being generated, you're capturing it so that it's available for when the wind isn't blowing. You need the ability to use peak energy generation when the wind is blowing as hard as it can. You want to be able to capture all of that electricity. Otherwise, some of it will go unused and wasted, which will make the relative cost of generation a lot higher. 
And if you get points of peak demand for an extended period, such as during a very cold spell in winter, you need forms of standby energy that can be brought online. And for a zero carbon scenario, that also needs to be zero carbon. So what does the CCC recommend us to get to zero? First, yes, it sees a major growth in renewables, principally offshore wind generation. Offshore wind turbines have become significantly cheaper and more efficient over the last few years. There are currently around 2,000 wind turbines in UK waters, with an average capacity of 4 megawatts. Those would be replaced in any case by 2050, and they would be replaced with newer turbines capable of generating 10 to 15 megawatts. The CCC scenario would require 7,500 turbines overall, which would take up around 2% of the UK's seabed. However, the increase of that generation capacity to between 50 to 75% of the UK's energy generations needs improvements in the system's flexibility to cope with that variability of wind demand. This would involve increased deployment of battery storage, highly efficient connection with other countries, and fast response peak sources. The CCC scenario assumes the use of a minimum of three nuclear power stations, providing steady, predictable baseload energy. At the moment, just one nuclear power plant is being built at Hinkley Point, which will provide 4% of electricity generation at the expected 2050 consumption levels. Mechanisms to fund the development of new nuclear power plant will need to be found to make the other two happen, since this is what's led to several other proposed plants being cancelled. Of course, nuclear provides base load. It isn't suited for peak time variable energy. So that relies on gas or hydrogen with the addition of carbon capture and storage. And this is one of the most difficult areas. If you simply have gas powered stations providing that capacity, you may reduce emissions very low, but you won't get to zero. Based on demand modeling by Imperial College, you might expect that peak rate capacity to be operating for 15% of hours, but only providing 1% of total energy generation. So it's a small percentage, but it's still carbon emissions. This then depends on improvements in CCS technology to get to 95% efficiency, which is the assumption made in the report by 2030. It may be with gas, it may be with hydrogen. Hydrogen is seen as a significant fuel for certain uses, particularly in shipping, for instance, but potentially also for this sort of power plant. However, as things currently stand, there is no hydrogen infrastructure. Nothing for producing, storing and transporting it. So all of that has to be developed from a nearly standing start. This is what the CCS's timeline for this looks like. Already ongoing and going throughout the period, continued putting in place base load and variable low carbon power generation, renewables and nuclear. Also ongoing, increasing the electrification of transport and heat. Decarbonizing the peak demand energy sources with CCS starts by 2030, hopefully, as the technology is sufficiently developed to perform to at least 95%. By 2035, we should be ready with a hydrogen infrastructure to help with decarbonizing backup power. While that's happening, we also have ongoing work to increase flexibility of the system to be able to cope with the higher percentages of variable renewables input. And then starting today, but concluding by 2040, upgrading distribution networks to cope with the additional capacity needed to support all the electric cars and home heating. Are there any factors that could change this? Mm, there's a few. CCS may be able to be gotten to work at 98% or 99% efficiency. That would reduce emissions further. Battery storage with multi-day capacity can become available, which would mitigate some of the backup needed for times at low re renewables generation. More than three nuclear power plants could be brought in. That's also a possible contribution. Advances in wave and tidal power could mitigate some of the variability in wind power. That would have reduced need for some of the other backup options. The report assumes further improvements in energy efficiency, but the real-life improvements might go further than assumed. So none of this is fixed, but the variables account for relatively minor increases in efficiency or timing. This is what the final mix of energy generation would potentially look like in 2050. So why can't this be done by 2025, as some people are asking? To recap, you're doubling the size of a network capacity to meet the additional load from electric car and building heating expansion. You're relying on technological innovation to get CCS to the efficiency required, and you're producing a minimum of two new build nuclear power plants. 
you're also massively expanding the number of turbines. That's not really the time constraint. It's more being able to improve the efficiency of the system to cope with the variability that they introduce into the energy supply. What we do need is for the government to sign up to the CCC plan. That will be the first hurdle. For this to work, companies that will provide the new capacity will need to be confident that the plan is the settled will of government over a long time frame, so they'll be confident to invest in the assets to generate the return. That would be best supported by having stability in government. And I don't know if you noticed, that isn't exactly a description of what we currently have. Anyway, there it is. Hope you have found that interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know particularly if you want other analyses of some of the different areas of the CCC report. See you next time.